up, guys? Hello, Kit Bash 3D community, everyone watching. Uh, I'm Max, I'm here with Christian Chihuahua. It's an exciting day. We released Ancient Temples today, and I'm really excited to show off this kit and to chat with Christian about uh, the cover that he made. And I'm, uh, I'm also joined here by Banks. What is up? <laughs> hey, Banks. Christian. How you doing, my man? <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Oh man, you got you got a dartboard ready to rock. <laughs> That's how I roll, man. Before we jump into the actual kit, um, let's take a look at some of Christian's work and, and get to know him. Christian, where where are you right now? Uh, you, you mean right now? Yeah, like I'm what, a, what country, what city, what what part of the world are you? Right, I'm in my living room uh, here in uh, Bucharest, Romania. Um, just uh, doing my thing. It's, <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, and you work at a, a, a studio that most people probably know. Yeah, it's a startup. But <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> um, where, where do you work? What's your deal? What's the uh, the run? I uh, current I currently work for uh, Ubisoft Entertainment. They've got a big studio here in Bucharest. It's actually uh, one of the oldest ones. It's the first one they opened after Paris. So it's got like about twenty six years of history. It's a it's a pretty huge place. I'm uh, really excited to have that here in my country. It's great. That's awesome. What, when, how long have you been at Ubisoft? When did you join? Um, on March 3rd, I'll turn five years. Five years, awesome. Yeah. And what, what were you doing before that? Well, I did a ton of different things. I mean, uh, I started out as a graphic designer, actually. I learned uh, Illustrator before Photoshop. I worked in that. I did uh, you know, graphic design, logo, branding, illustration. I mean, I have... I basically have like three different separate portfolios that I could showcase as three different people almost. Uh, there's all that uh, graphic design work. And then I went to uh, television. In television, I worked as a pre-production designer, uh, did a lot of shows, a lot of um, uh, show branding, both original stuff uh, and imports as well, like licensed shows and stuff like that. Um, then I had a small stint in film uh, where I worked uh, on a uh, <laughs> quite a lot of a lot of unknown B horror movies made in Japan. Uh, that was interesting for sure. And then uh, by that time, you know, I was preparing in parallel. I was getting ready to start as a concept artist. So by that time, I was ready, and uh, I made the jump into concept art. So I I worked as a as a concept artist in an outsourcing studio here in Bucharest and freelancing from home at the same time. Then I went full freelance for uh, for about a year and a half, two years. And after that, I joined Ubisoft. So it was a, you know, I kind of touched bases with a lot of different things just to kind of figure out what I really enjoy doing. So uh, uh, that was my path. It's all over the place. When When you got to Ubisoft, what was your first project there? Uh, I got hired on Ghost Recon Wildlands. Um, man, it was such a such an amazing project. I have uh, tons of uh, awesome memories for it uh, because I ca I caught it right in pre production, right? So it's the sweetest, not not entirely blue sky, but as close as you can get, and I guess. And I was able to just spit out like I was hungry for painting, and I was a uh, really stoked about doing that project as well. I did about, I think I did a, like around 700, 700 concepts in my first year. Oh my on, God. On Rico and Wildlands. Yeah, I was just, man, it was, it was super fun, right? Like I would come home, do the same thing. It was crazy. I loved it. I loved it. And after that, um, that was my first project. And after that, I, I guess they liked the, the way I did that. So uh, they bumped me up as a senior. And then um, after after Wildlands, I got the opportunity to move to Origins, 
and try my hand as art director. Uh, and Assassin's Creed Origins, which which right. what what setting was Origins? I was. It was like, Egypt, ancient Egypt. Egypt, that's right. Okay. You can see there is some stuff right there uh, where uh, that's Odyssey. Um, so in uh, Origins, it was a it was a really cool project. I mean. I got to work with Egypt, with ancient Egypt, which is, it, it was really, really wonderful for me. I got to do my crazy architecture drawings and uh, bring some some really iconic places to life. I mean, I was pretty much uh, have had to do a huge hippodrome and uh, all the arenas in the game. And uh, it was a really interesting challenge, definitely something that I was not used to and uh, a, a huge learning curve for me but as far as i'm concerned uh it's one of those things where i don't want to say that i'm like extremely happy with it because you know how it is like you'll 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 always see your faults in your work um but um i, I it's one of those things where i look at it and i'm not really sure what i <laughs> what i could have done on top of that so i'm pretty happy with it it was These it was an amazing project insane. Thank you, man. And uh, yeah, we got to do a bit of everything over there, so it was it was really cool. And yeah, having to do a huge landmark like that and being in charge of like a, like a something that's instantly recognizable and people will will immediately know what it is and they will judge you on their expectation of what an arena should be. That was a, a tough challenge for us, but hopefully it turned out okay. It's interesting to hear you say you'll always recognize your your mistakes. How do you how do you decide when a piece is done? Um, it really depends. I mean, the reality of it is that very often it's a time constraint that kind of shuts you down. Um, but most of the time, you you kind of get a feeling. I don't know. It it comes with with time, right? The more experience you have, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about is you just kind of know when it's, when it's okay. And there's definitely, there's varying definitions of done for different things. Um, you can, you can super hyper polish and hyper detail a piece if that's what's needed for that piece or the same question can be asked, like, how do you decide when a speed painting is done? You know what I mean? It's when you've got all the information in and it shows your intention for the final painting, I guess that's when the speed painting can be considered done. It's the same for for a larger scale painting or something that takes a bit longer. You just kind of need to figure out what the criteria is. For me, it's um, it's usually revolving around, do I feel okay with uh, showing this around? Do I feel that... I've put everything I could in it, um, depending on the circumstances, then I'll just call it done. I love that, how you talk about, did you reach your initial intention with the piece? Do you find with um, doing portfolio work or doing pieces where, where you may not have a, a work deadline that you set an intention in the beginning and also a deadline for yourself? Whenever I talk to people at workshops and stuff, um, we talk a lot about doing portfolio work and the truth is I haven't really done portfolio work in very many years. Uh, it, after a certain point, your portfolio becomes just the snowball of stuff that you have to do in your job. And you know, the, the best of it kind of becomes your continual portfolio. Um, but I would say working without a, without a set deadline can be kind of treacherous. I think it's very healthy to to set set a deadline and set some really practical goals for the stuff that you do in your portfolio. Um, I'm I'm curious when you moved over to so when you finished Origins, did you right away? St I, I see like you did some personal work. Uh, did you take some time off before Odyssey, or did you jump right into Odyssey? No, I jumped. Uh, I jumped right uh, right in it basically. Um, yeah, I jumped right into it. I work, but I mean, at home, um, I just, uh, I just don't post that much right now because I'm, I'm not always super keen on showing that to people <clears throat> because it's not, 
it hasn't hit my definition of done as we were discussing earlier. So normally I don't put that stuff around, but usually what I work on at home is kind of at the um, different spectrum of thematic than what I do at work. I, it just kind of helps uh, keep me fresh, if that makes sense. I feel like I would I would get super burnt out if I was doing like ancient Greece at work, uh, you know, for a year or something and doing the same thing at home. So whenever I come home, you know, from working on Origins and Odyssey, you know, I would sculpt a buggy or, you know, random stuff like that. That's amazing. I, I love that. Um that you do that kind of personal work and that you push yourself experimentally with, you know, like this Yoon project is so different from your other work, but it's so cool to see you exploring that stuff. I've always been this, that way. I mean, I used to, I used to joke around with, with some of my friends and say that if I had chosen a path 11 years ago, 12 years ago, and just stayed on that, I think I would be like creme de creme. <laughs> but because I spread myself uh, kind of thin, trying different things, it's like uh, I had this, I mentioned this kind of uh, topic in a, in a presentation. I said, okay, master, they usually say jack of all trades, master of none, right? And I said, why not jacked up in most trades? That's how <laughs> I put it. Uh, so not like super pro bodybuilder level, but at least jacked up in most areas. I've always, I kind of came up as a generalist, especially from working in TV and doing freelance illustration. You, you never knew what your next client would be. So I would go from, you know, doing a fantasy characters for a car game. And then the next project would be a board game about mechs. So I always tried to teach myself to be open to this stuff. That's why my portfolio is like super kind of random in terms of thematic. I just try out different things. When you when you started on Odyssey, how long ago did you start on that game? I want to say it was before before the launch of Origins, but I, I can't tell you exactly when. Gotcha. I, I, I spent about about a year, a year and a half on it, I think. I mean, side. even the work you did on Odyssey is so it's it's funny to see some personal work that you've done and then how that really leads into Odyssey. Do you find that like the stuff that you're exploring ends up showing up in, in your professional work? Oh, absolutely. I mean, basically, that's why that's why I love experimenting so much. I've had I've literally used like a ridiculous concept design for some Nike shoes into incorpor incorporating them into like a like an ancient Greek fantasy scheme. I tried to bring in as much stuff as possible, like absorb as, as much visual information as possible, then kind of let it sit there. And I allow myself to grab inspiration. I, I try to grab inspiration from the most random places that you that you wouldn't normally expect. And I think that kind of keeps it fresh. Say, for example, if you're drawing a spaceship, if you have to paint a spaceship or you have to model it or whatever, if you're going to, you know, go to Google or go to Pinterest or our station and look at spaceships, uh, you're going to be looking at the same kind of ideas that everybody's been putting in them, right? Like uh, the thrusters are all going to be samey, everything, you know? But if you go to like a random other spectrum, like you look at farming tractors and, uh, you know, harvesters and stuff, and then you put that into your design, you try to translate it and then kind of put it into your design, you're going to have some really interesting spaceships that have these new design languages, these new ideas that will put them, will separate them from the mass of people doing that, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I think that's one of the things we love about <clears throat> Git bashing is this oh, idea yeah. of being able to take a bunch of different pieces and kind of let a little bit of serendipity happen. Um, and maybe combining different pieces that you wouldn't think go together or combining worlds together to create something unique and different. I mean, don't even get me started about kid bashing, man. <laughs> I know we had some long talks when we first met in London last summer and, uh, yeah. and we started going down that rabbit hole of talking about kit bashing and a lot of the vehicles that you had made from kit bashing random parts together. Um, and it seems like that's pretty embedded into your workflow. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a way of living. It started, uh, 
you know you know the story i'll just make a, a short intro to it um it started when i was 28 and i walked into a lego store because as a kid i was never able to afford legos so i always had this thing that i needed to get rid of so i walked into a lego store i spent an absurd amount of money and and bought a bunch of uh, lego technic sets and took them home built them uh pulled them apart did the uh, b model they all have a b model did, did that and that really kind of got me thinking like you know what like uh, I really wish I could do this with my painting, right? Because I knew that, okay, I could put some things together with actual Lego and then take photos and then use that as a basis for my painting. But then again, I wasn't very proficient in engineering and Lego Technic can get quite technical. <laughs> um, so I wasn't really ready for that. And then I also, I knew that I was going to have to spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars and full, like fill half of my living room with, with Lego blocks just to kind of be able to actually bash some stuff, to, some awesome stuff together. So I started looking for ways to do that on my computer. And that's how I started um, ex exploring with uh, ZBrush initially and doing uh, ZBrush. I still use that a lot. It's, uh, it's really cool for me. That's so cool to, to think you were you were building actual 3D models and then taking photos of them and painting over it. I yeah, pretty that. much. It was yeah, it was kind of awkward. It was like you know, like scratching your head backwards a bit uh, <laughs> as far as the process would go. It was definitely super time intensive. It made no sense, um, but it was the only solution I had at that point. Um, and then once I got into ZBrush and kind of started figuring out how to work with uh, multi uh, with insert multi meshes, I was like, okay, this is it. <laughs> so I just I started uh, like modeling different parts. Uh, you know, I I bought a couple of kits from people, um, and then I just started going absolutely crazy. And what I found to be uh, extraordinary about that is. Something that I did with your kid as well, a little bit, is having no constraint on pushing and pulling and like stretching things out. Because you can't stretch a Lego piece <clears throat> in real life, right? But you can definitely do that with 3D. So that just added an extra layer of liberty uh, on top of everything. So I ended up using whatever, like cutlery and stuff and doing machines out of it and all that random stuff. It was uh, It was really cool because when, when you get into that mindset of, okay, you start with the idea that, okay, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a hover train. Um, for example, um, can you, can you, uh, can you bring up the hover train? Sure. On my, on my air station for a second and uh, scroll down to the model. So basically when you have that idea, like, oh, okay, I'm just going to do a hover train. And then you go through your set. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter what those parts were initially for um what matters is what parts you need and what you need them to be and which means you can take literally everything and turn it into something that you need so almost every part on that train was not intended to be used as what it's used for in the train if that makes sense which just yeah. which just you know opens up a huge pandora box of do whatever use whatever <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is awesome. It's funny. It almost looks like Lego pieces, especially when you have it like colored in uh, in Keyshot. It's so cool. I think what you just said too about repurposing pieces speaks to the nature of Kibash as well as creation, just in general. Is taking taking the things that you have and and seeing them to be something new. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, what you guys are doing is is really cool because. You're, you know, you're putting out the set and you're saying, okay, look, we considered this set to be an architecture kit, but at the same time, it's not limiting and you can just do whatever you put your mind to using that kit. I mean, it's not, it's primary purpose is for that. Absolutely. But there is no limit on how you could repurpose and reuse that and mix it with other things and come up with stuff. I feel like this is a good window to uh, to start to, or at least to show off this new kit that just came out. 
Uh, yeah, wow. yeah, that was that was my smooth transition. That was, that was <laughs> very smooth. Um, um, and, and while we dig into that, Max, we got uh, Don Detron just jumped in the chat with us. And Arthur and Droki have been going back and forth. We got Speedy Dude in the house. Hey, Speedy, Speedy. Says, you got the guy for temples. Yeah, well, you know, before before I show, what's up, Spirit Dude? What's up, Don Detron? Um, Mike Laser. Before I show off the actual kit, actually, um, what I'm really excited about, um, I, I believe, you know Sebastian Luca, right, Christian? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Sebastian Luca is just an amazing designer, and um, we, we came up with this mood board, but we really wanted to go in depth and really design something unique that kind of across quite a bit of different cultures um, and make kind of a ubiquitous ancient temples kit that would work if you were doing, you know, anything from Southeast Asia to uh, Mayan temples or South American temples or even alien temples or, or a different civilization. Uh, we really wanted something that would kind of cover all the all the ground. And, um, and Sebastian Luca designed these beautiful um, temples these are these are the initial designs that we um, that we really started with, and just the process of, of designing these temples mm -hmm. is such a, a fun one to watch Sebastian work um, and go through and iterate and and figure out what are the best um, the best shapes and designs that give people as much freedom as possible to to create really imaginative worlds. So from there we uh, we built built it out and um, and. I'm I'm really really excited for for the actual how this kit turned out because I think it's absolutely probably one of our, our best kits yet and and we had uh, Jacob Vondra uh, build this and I'll kind of just show off a little bit of this kit um, I won't do rendering just because I think it's going to slow down my computer a little bit so and and also because Christian's going to jump into to a little three D to show it off. But, but that idea of being able to take different pieces and, and bash them together into um, things that you wouldn't normally expect, I think that's even more prevalent here. Um, we've really designed this kit to be able to grab pieces and be able to pull them right off and, and be able to mash them together with other pieces and other temples and, and really be able to customize this into a ton of different ways to create even more unique temples. Christian, being the temple guy, as Speedy pointed out, what was what was your uh, first reaction when opening this kit? When I first opened the Max file, I could totally see his his um, his work shine through, which was really cool for me to see. I got a sneak peek of this um, earlier, uh, at least the initial designs, and I thought back then that they looked uh, absolutely cool. When I uh, when I first opened it, I was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be fun." <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty much it. Like, oh man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was pretty much my reaction. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. when we were talking about when we, when ancient temples was near the finish line, and we were like, "Okay, so who should be the cover artist for this?" Uh, that was probably one of the most obvious choices in the world. Uh, I just immediately thought of your work and thought you'd be a perfect fit to be the first one to get your hands on this kit and kind of um, show people uh, what you can do with it and and create create something imaginative and and different. Oh yeah, and about that, there's uh, something that I wanted to mention to you. Um, like I'm definitely gonna keep using this. Um, it's really really fun, and I feel like you know when you you do something like you you do a cover, you do your best to showcase you know what. What the kid can do and then you're working on it and you i got idea for like four other pieces <laughs> you know, re revolving around this kit so it's definitely gonna keep popping on my on my art station yeah part of this kit we also included a lot of these sub details too so if you want to yeah those were great by the way awesome the, the small bits yeah yeah and one of the things with this kit too just to um let some of the some people know in case you're interested um, this kit also comes with displacement maps. Um, if you wanted to, to displace things, you, you, you can, and it adds a, a whole new level of detail to it. Um, I have them turned off right now. It, it is a pretty big GPU suck if you decide to use them, but, uh, but the quality that you can get when you do use them 
uh, just takes it to a whole other level. Christian, I'd love to jump in uh, and, and take a look at the cover you created and, uh, and kind of go through what your process was and how you put it together. Right. Do you want to pull up the cover or do I do it? Uh, do you want to do I'll it? Let, I'm going to let you share screens. So what we have here is basically um, what, I try to, what I try to put together here is this uh this you know massive scale type of fortress or you know um i i kept making stories in my mind as i as i went on uh basically these uh this recluse type of society that kind of lived uh, remotely in an area of the desert that nobody goes to and stuff and they've prospered there and you know uh, life is good and peaceful and stuff um and then uh, these other guys that are coming in are refugees, pretty much, and they're trying to get the big guys from from the city involved. So uh, definitely, one of the things that I wanted to showcase was was just the scale of it. I mean, a lot of these buildings are in their actual scale, so you'll you'll definitely find that there's quite a quite a healthy gradation of uh, of scale through the kit, which I found very helpful, and then introduce, you know, various kinds of elements and stuff and bury some of them in the sand and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the piece. I love that you've created a narrative around the piece. It, 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 um, it, it shines through even if I don't understand, if I don't know the details of the narrative, when I look at it, I can feel that there's a story going on. It's a, uh, it's, it's just uh, it's definitely it definitely uh, answers some questions it's it's something that i always uh, say and uh, talk to people is like you got to you know when you add something to it try to at least try to make it make sense uh, and try to have a, an answer like ideally you want when when you ask a person about like, hey what's that and you, you should have an answer for it or why is it there mm -hmm. and have creating these stories um, in in your mind when you're working on a piece like just adds that layer of believability to it and it just makes the whole thing feel alive and stuff amazing How, what uh what software did you use to put this together well um i'm glad you lost that max <laughs> 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 all right so basically i um I went from uh, I did a couple of paper sketches that I don't have with me. That was the uh, did those with uh, the kit open in, in Max, just looking at all the elements, and then <clears throat> went through to Max and then to Unreal. I actually did a lot of the work in Unreal, and I'm gonna show you guys kind of what this looks like for me. So this is pretty much the scene. It's uh, let me get rid of the fog for a second. Or let me show you the camera. So I've got a couple of cameras set up around the scene, uh, which is really useful because when you when you set up a, a good camera that you're happy with, then you just lock it in position and you can always go back to it and take some more passes or do more renders and stuff like that. I've got a couple of these around. Most of them are from drafts that I uh, gave up on or show something else and I believe yeah this is the uh, the actual camera it's a bit below yeah this is the actual camera that I used for uh, for the piece so uh, this is kind of what the uh, the scene looks like in a reel and uh, jumping out of this I'll show you let me get rid of the fog so we can see the whole the whole thing here Christian you w yeah. you ran through a thing that I, I had a question on do you yeah. do you often Paper sketch first is that an important part of your process? When it uh, when it's architecture, often I really really do. It's just uh, I, that's one of the things that I spend a lot of time drawing, just naturally. Yeah. So it's it's right. So here you can see. I mean, that's a backdrop building right there. I mean, it's not pretty, but uh, so basically I dropped a lot of these elements here in my scene and. Um, then I started co uh, combining the the, um, the big setup and creating this uh, this huge uh, temple. So there's a couple of access points. There's uh, I've started thinking about okay maybe maybe you can go from here and then go up on there 
and then up on these ramps and then keep going go down go up and kind of explore the the citadel so what i was saying is i i put together this this big scene here and the one thing that i knew from the get-go with this one is that i wanted it to be really big <laughs> This guy wanted it. I wanted it to be huge, <laughs> so, um, and so that's kind of uh, how I how I started working with the scale, and then uh, I you know I put together like some accesses like a gate, a big gate there, and a smaller gate there, and then uh, like an access through a building, and then some ramps and stuff. They're not you can see. Uh, some of this stuff is pretty. This is all added by me. You can you can tell because it looks like crap uh, com by com by comparison. But I'm not usually worried with that stuff because it comes out in painting. So, and then uh, yeah, the big uh, the big uh, central square, I guess, with uh, one of my one of my little girlfriends right here, <laughs> right right there. Right there, <laughs> you kind of need it. And here you can see. I mean, sometimes you have to adjust stuff like this. Uh, obviously, this doesn't make sense because it should be there. But then again, working from working from the camera, um, I I just wanted to see that small arch right there. So that's why I uh, cheated my way a little bit. And uh, do you want to see what what goes on below? Because kind of I kind of made a mess down here. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Looking, looking under a very unpleasant skirt. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's what it takes. So yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much how I how I went about building it and uh, all this stuff. I mean, I uh, I showed Max a couple of a couple of progress shots. He was super nice. He helped me out with um, with uh, some some really great feedback. Uh, added more stuff to the background and things like that. And, some uh, different moods, but I'll show you guys the, the Photoshop drafts as well. So yeah, this is pretty much uh, my Unreal pipeline in a way. This is what my scenes usually look like. It's just a deserted map all around and <laughs> right there is the good stuff. It's so cool and to see. I think you're the first cover artist to uh, put this together in Unreal. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's I got I got into it, you know, with a with the help of a friend. I've I've only been using Unreal for you know less than a year now, but it's definitely awesome. And you know, being able to just pick any any type of perspective and all the advantages of the camera and everything, the lenses and the lights, of course. Um, we we also played around with a couple of a couple of different moods, as you'll see in Photoshop. So what's really cool is, for example, if I wanted to try something else, I'll just grab this. This light bulb over here. I'm not gonna, not gonna turn this into a unreal showcase. But see how, how easy, how easy it is to just, uh, to just fool around with, uh, with lighting, different lighting situation. And then if I go back to my, to my initial camera, then I'll have a, a different kind of uh, tone towards my image. And maybe I, I'm not gonna use this as a, as a, an actual light source for my piece, but I can use it to kind of blend some colors together and get an, in, an interesting uh, variation. So yeah, that's, that's pretty so cool. much how I've, uh, I've made a mess of your kit, man. <laughs> 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 made a total mess, but this is what I promised you in, in, in London. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what, what you're built for. Exactly. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And speaking, you know, with what I said before, um, just, pushing and pulling and, you know, branching out and trying different things. Uh, I believe that's this pretty much says it. So yeah, recombining as well. This is a group that I made from one of your pillars, which is grossly overscaled here. <laughs> but normally it's just a tiny pillar, but just uh, blew, uh, blew it up and multiplied it and turned it into something completely different. Not sure yet what it is, but, you know. It's fantasy. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, that's that's unreal. Yeah. So let's take a look at Photoshop. I would love to yeah. see kind of how you got this from a, an Unreal block out to to the final painting. Right. So here's uh, some of the initial shots that I showed Max. 
as I was working. This was uh, the, the these were the first takes, basically. And uh, I had I had some cameras. I had uh, something like this, which was a very kind of wide lens, I guess. Is it wide or narrow? Because I'm kind of confused. It's like it makes everything look kind of flat and monumental. And then uh, this one, which was an uh, over overhead shot. Uh, this definitely I'm going to be doing again in the future with your kit, like a big uh, overview shot. But, you know, realistically, this one would probably take me weeks just because I'm very slow. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this one was the prize winner. So basically, uh, this is kind of what we started with. Um, there was definitely some, some stuff to figure out and to fix around here. The foreground was really mushy. I wasn't really happy with it. Uh, this building right here was not helping. Um, and it, it kind of takes, also it takes a, a, some level of constraint, I, I would say, from my part to kind of um, to kind of figure out or try to at least figure out what the whole thing is going to look like when it's put together because now you're miss you're missing all the layers of fog and um, like distance uh, layering and, and stuff like that so it's you know it's tough in the beginning but yeah there was definitely a lot of things to fix and uh, the mood as well I mean it was a bit too idyllic um so we went for for something a bit more grim so yeah first thing i did was i pulled the camera back this is uh going back to my psd for the for the cover piece so first thing i did was i pulled the camera back way way back to catch all that stuff um and catch uh all the the wall elements and um catch a bit more of the of the background there and and a bit of spacing from the from the buildings and let's see, let's see what we got so I've got a, a, a couple of layers so this was done really fast and just by hiding different sections I would say was I did these uh, I call them donkeys uh, they're these um, the only thing you usually use them is to select really fast so you with uh, having the sky fully black really just allows you to select everything super fast and then I, I did a couple of these passes just to just to sort of um, be able to put uh, mood and stuff between them if that makes sense uh, here's uh, that initial sky that we dropped in the eventually you can kind of see the outline of the of the whole thing and yeah this is just a bunch of random painting i mean the little layers just don't do that much and this is kind of a combination between the the backdrop that we had initially and the painting that was done in the front so this was a pretty dirty work uh, still but here is uh where the the big mood uh, mood shift happened we wanted to to go a bit darker um so just started exploring that and darkening things up and adding some more cold tones to it and um yeah but there was a uh, quite a bit of desaturation as well i wanted to make everything a bit cold there so more like uh more towards a desert night or a storm or something like that because Bear in mind, at this point, I was kind of progressing with that story that I told you guys. So I was, as I was working, I was progressing with the, well, it's a small seed of a story, but slowly advancing with that in my mind. So it definitely felt like I have to push this, this different tone to it, this much more somber feeling. So wait, I got a couple of the ones in here. But yeah, I guess I'll show you these as well, just for a sec. I mean, here I've got another you know, another layer of these donkeys that I use just to select stuff uh, faster. I love that you call them donkeys. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I think I learned uh, well. You know, I learned the, the term. Uh, it's actually used in uh, in school. It's when you you put a shape on some on paper and you draw along it. You call that a donkey. Ah. <laughs> I, I don't know why. It's like a masking. <laughs> 
Like a masking donkey. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's not my word. <laughs> right? So, so here I've got, you know, I've got a couple of that stuff going on. And there, here comes the big toning, I guess. So you can see, like, here my, my groups are kind of colored and grouped and they have names. So I've got, like, some foreground, mid-ground, background, toning, fixes, and effects. That's usually how it goes for my, for my files. And toning is really just toning. I mean, uh, it's a different different types of variation of color variation with some painting done on top. Uh, this is just tightening tightening it up um, and cleaning things and taking care of rough edges and stuff like that. And on the fixes, yeah, there was some something that was bugging me because. In the initial draft, I had this, let me just copy this for a sec. I had this light source because I was uh, going for a different kind of mood of having this kind of holy city with, uh, I don't know, some alien, I don't even know, some religious <laughs> thing, a big symbol in the sky and stuff like that to show that the city is blessed or something. And that was going to contribute a lot to my lighting situation. But once the once the mood changed, I just kept that as a very subtle type of light. So I had to bring everything down, I guess. And uh, yeah, just a lot of different fixes. I mean, most of them you can only see in high resolution because it's just, you know, working with the textures in the kit and covering up um, things that I've stretched or stuff like that. Because I, like I said, I made a mess. I made a mess. So, um, I was just trying to do the, the janitor part. Um, right, so here's the um, a big uh, FX uh, pass, which wasn't all that much. It was just adding uh, various layers of fog and some smoke and stuff like that. It wasn't a very, you know, intensive, intense, intense piece as far as that's concerned. So. There was not too much of that, but just uh, some smoke and fog and stuff like that. And that's where the donkeys, <laughs> that's where your, your mask, your mask layers really come, come in handy because if you can just grab a part of that and then I think you can see the selection on my screen and then put some, some shadow, be, uh, sorry, some fog behind it really fast. It's really useful. Yeah, I mean, it's that, more like that a, effects helped so much to bring this to life. The, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the what, it's the bonding agent, in a way. It's kind of what what brings it together. And uh, yeah, and let's see, final. That's not a final. It's, yeah, yeah. There's no difference. So this is the final. And of course. If you're a nice person, and you should be, you always use your your trusty black and white layer to figure out where you're at with contrast and stuff, and check out your values and your focal points and everything. And something else, which was an interesting requirement for this piece in particular, was uh, this stuff. You guys uh, gave me a, a square uh, version as well. So it was uh, interesting because um, there was the the extra challenge of kind of making the whole thing look good but also keeping the focal the focal area interesting and having this uh, secondary composition the square composition be interesting as well uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting challenge so yeah yeah you knocked this this cover out of the park man it, it's such a beautiful piece and i think it gets me really excited to play with the kit Thank you. I mean, it was really, really, really fun to work with this. I mean, for me, it was uh, it was super exciting as well because it it's been a while since I did uh, work on Origins, so it really felt close to home. I was like, yes, I get to paint desert stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, in the chat, um, since we're since we're wrapping this up, if you guys have any other questions for Christian, throw them out there. Um, in the meantime, Christian, where where can where can people find your work? Uh, I guess my art station, my Facebook, just uh, anywhere. My Facebook has a lot of 
my older work as well and tons of random things. It's a, I, kind of a no, it's kind of a no filter type of uh, type of showcase, I guess. Awesome. So, and uh, other, are you do, are you going to be at any events this year that people can can meet you at or get some portfolio reviews or? What, yeah, what, absolutely. What are you up to absolutely. this year? Man, it's crazy. Um, so okay, so I'm going um, day after tomorrow, so Thursday morning. Uh, I'm flying out to Belgium to a conference uh, called uh, One Up. Oh yeah, I've got a lot of artwork on Pornhub as well. Um, <laughs> and um, I've, you know, I, the awesome guys at, over at Wacom uh, invited me over and I'm really hyped to do that with them. Um, and after that, uh, later in May, towards the end of May, around my birthday on the 26th, it kind of looks like I'll be in Czech Republic um, at a at a conference, and then in Brno. I don't know. I just got the message tonight, so it's not it's not really set in stone. And then um, I'll be doing a conference at uh, Ipca in Portugal, in around Porto, which is a beautiful city. And then Japan, I'm doing a conference in Japan in August. And uh, for now, I think that's about it. But definitely, I'll I'll be uh, at playgrounds again because I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was a blast to be there. But I don't know if I'm I'm kind of not sure if I'll be at any of the the usual suspects. <laughs> like I don't know if kind of looks like uh, this year I'm going sort of to different kind of conferences, but. That's awesome. Well, um, I will definitely see you at Playgrounds. It's just what an amazing event that is. Um, yeah, it's insane. And if you guys yeah. in the chat are in any of those countries, you should hit up those events and you can uh, check out. We got Spirit in the chat, so we'll throw him a shout out. Check out Firestarter Magazine so that uh, um, you can keep track of all of these different events and get to meet such amazing artists. Um, this is how Christian and I met. and had an absolute blast running around Amsterdam together uh, <laughs> and London and yeah. Eindhoven yeah. and a ton of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was so crazy, man. I, I, I met you more than more often than I meet a couple of my friends in Bucharest. It's, it's that's, pretty cool. It's so Same. fun. I was saying that with Steve Corman, like on our fifth trip last year, like <laughs> Steve and Saba and I were in a cab and we're like, we see each other more than we see anyone in our city. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's such a cool thing. I, I love that that exists and, and that we all get to get connected from everywhere in the world. Um, well, yeah. guys, thank you for, for joining, uh, for, for hanging with us, for taking a look at Christian's awesome work. Thank you, Christian, for, for coming, for doing this beautiful cover and for, for sharing your knowledge with the Kipash community. No problem. Thank you for for uh, asking me to do it. and It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to do more stuff together. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, also don't forget it is week one. So um, so if you want to grab Ancient Temples, it's up on Kibesh. Um, and you can grab it this week for half off. Um, it's just a nice little thing that we try to do for our community. I'll post the link in the in the chat. Uh, it's a thing we like to do in the in the community to you know have um, these kits be more accessible uh, for, for the people who follow what we're doing at Kibesh and for tune into these types of things. Um, thank you guys for, for joining us. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit, in, in a couple weeks probably, um, with, we got a new contest coming up. We got new kits every month and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Um, yeah, so, so good to see you, Christian. Thank you for this. And thank you to everyone out in the chat for tuning in with us. Please uh, keep coming and hanging out with us. We do this for y'all. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. And more importantly, thank you for connecting with each other. Make stuff out there together. Uh, and join the dis the Discord. JD Hilliard does an awesome job of running the Discord. He just threw a link in the chat. Um, JD, thank you for all you do. And uh, and if you guys want to connect, uh, continue the conversation and all of that, it's uh, the Discord is really an amazing place for that. Uh, yeah, you're the best, JD. With that, uh, thank you all. Uh, we will see you next time.